secure a top two finish in the group if they beat um, Scotland uh, this evening. But um, all in all, it seems to me like both sides were quite satisfied with a point apiece there, Jürgen. Yeah, I mean, I've been surprised. We said at halftime, OK, Croatia has to come out and go full speed, which they did. I mean, it did and equalise the game and a uh, uh, beautiful goal by Perisic. Um, and then you thought, OK, now they're going for three points. And the longer it went on, the more it looked like they are actually OK, just tying this game yeah. and uh, putting all their cards in. It surprises me a little bit. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit risky. Mm, it's a bit risky. Um, Czech Republic would be delighted. Four points, pr almost certainly see them through, come what may. You know, when, when the team got drawn into this group, obviously, everybody was saying, OK, the only chance might be to, to, to win against Scotland and hope that three points might, uh, you know, you might be the lucky team You've got who goes four. with three points. Now we've got four, which is obviously, I think with four points, they're they going to go through, yeah. which, is, uh, which is obviously the, the great news for the team, because uh, although it was a little bit unexpected, and, you know, I think they deserve it, and they deserved in the first game, they deserve it today. I have to say, they were brave enough, they were not passive, they, they tried to take initiative, and... And in the end of the day, uh, you know, they were never in danger of, uh, of losing the game. So I think the, the, the draw is probably a fair result. Petered out a bit, didn't it? That's 20. <laughs> yep, did it, did. I think we Not saw... Not really got riveting, but... I know, but once uh, <laughs> Croatia scored the goal, yeah. you think, actually, right, they're going to be on the front foot, they're going to go for it now, that experience will be telling now, yeah. and they'll, get the, they'll up the speed of their game. Yeah. And um, They've done that in fits and starts, but they never consistently yeah. had pace in their game. And I think until Petkovic came on... Yeah who became a bit of a focal point they could play into and then they could feed off of that, they had nothing going forward. Perisic was the only one that looked a threat, really, for, for most yeah. of the game and scored that cracking goal. He scored the goal. It was a, it was a, a fantastic strike. I mean, the keeper, I let, I let Peter go around that, but this is here. Suchek probably should get on the ball. That's experience there. Don't let him play it quick. This is the only time they've done anything quick in the game, really. And they get 1v1 again against Sufal. He slips, and then it's about shooting on sight and the keeper could make a better decision. Better. But here the movement from Perisic yeah. was fantastic. Comes short and then goes long. That space in behind exploits that. And then it's all about just trying to get a shot off on goal. Better. What do you, goes with his fist. Do you think his technique should have been different? Well, you know, it's a hard shot. And then, you know, when you decide to go with the fist to get uh, more power on the, on the rebound, then obviously you risk that if there is a slight movement on the ball that you risk that you might miss it. I think this is actually what happened. I think Tomas could have used, uh, you know, his, his palms just to put the palms behind the ball and, and let it bounce off it and, yeah. and to make sure that the ball doesn't go through him. Yeah. And I, th I know, I think he'll be probably disappointed with his choice of, uh, of technique in there. But, uh, but you know, I, it, it's why, a why strong you, shot. Why, Pete, why, why do keepers go to punch it when they're trying to... Normally, when growing up, you've always known to yeah. just save the ball. Get it I think some, some, you know, some people use it because uh, I think in Germany generally the goalkeepers use it a lot. You know, we watch the German football; a lot of you know, a lot of them go and and punch. They try to get the power to get the ball away from the area. I I, I never I never did that. I always use my palms, and because I always believe that you can use your palms, you know, to to navigate the ball to the areas where you need, Especially and it's more worse. secure. So these balls are really fast and, and there's unexpected movement. So you cover more space when you put both hands yeah. and palms and, and then, you know, you make sure that the ball doesn't go around or through. But you have to give Perisic a, a real compliment. Oh, I mean, the shot was... Uh, yeah. The power rocket. shot was, was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And they had a couple of other chances uh, in the game towards the end. Yeah, Vlasic had a chance as well then. Yeah. We see him here, you know, just waiting, being right there. Then he controlled the ball, he got a little bit backwards and he mishit it. Um, so there was uh, definitely after halftime, we saw a different Croatia for 10, mm. 15 minutes. You know, as the, the goal helped them, you know, they became more com confident. There was better movement, movement off the ball as well. Then this chance coming for Petkovic. Um, also slightly mishit it. Good block here. Um, but they never looked like they, they badly, badly want to win this game. Yeah. I mean, mm. you expected them after the equaliser, go with them, you score the second goal. You, Croatia, you know, in the World Cup final three years ago. Yeah. And the more it went on, the flatter they became. And, uh, and now they got to beat Scotland in, uh, um, in, in the last game, and it's a tricky one. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, the penalty incident, um, if you missed it, was a little bit controversial, uh, to say the least, Ria. 
Yeah, again, without VAR, this definitely doesn't get given. Um, I think the, the next angle or the one after, you see that the, the two players that go up for it, both of their arms are very similar going up both to the ball. Go up with our, yeah. Not looking, at, He's only looking at one thing, Lovren, and that's the ball. Unfortunately, if you've got a flailing arm, we're hearing good, great pictures there. Doesn't see him until late. I don't even think he actually sees him until his elbow hits him, but the referee gives it, and it's a fantastic call cool penalty from Schick. Well, there's top score in the tournament now. He's got um, three goals in all, which is quite impressive. Um, Jürgen, I want to ask you, I, I, I'm going to, I don't want to um, get out of order here in any way, shape or form, but there's a, there's a managerial job available in <laughs> North London. <laughs> it's a club called Tottenham Hotspur. Um, you were one of their very favourite players. You've been a brilliant manager. It seems to me, I mean, you've not been mentioned anywhere. I've, I've not seen. Would that be a possibility? Would you be interested? Come Daniel Levy give you a call? Well, I called him after he let uh, Mourinho go. And said, you did? Yeah, I said, Daniel, what's the case now? <laughs> oh, and, right. uh, he said, <laughs> oh, really? Oh, OK. <laughs> and, and he said to me, listen, you know, I have so much to do right now. I can sort things out, you know, at the yeah. club, you know, and let's, let's talk a little later on. And then I saw all the different names walking in and talking and walking out. out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the same still today. No, I mean, Spurs is, is in my heart. Absolutely would I consider that. But uh, if he doesn't want to, <laughs> you cannot force him. No, no, if he doesn't. But you'd be very interested. Oh, absolutely. There you go. That's a little exclusive right there. <laughs> little scoop. Little scoop. Uh, uh, well, we have uh, two live games for you tomorrow. First up at lunchtime, world champions France uh, take on Hungary in Group F. Uh, BBC One at a quarter past one. Then later that evening, Spain take on Poland in Group E. Both teams looking for a vital win. That's BBC One and iPlayer at 7.30. And there's another match tonight. You may have heard about it. Um, we're about an hour away from kickoff at Wembley. Both sides safely into the stadium, and the team news is in. Uh, England make two changes, uh, both at fullback, with James and Shaw replacing Walker and Trippier. Harry Maguire is named on the bench, and uh, for Scotland, Tierney is fit enough to start. Uh, Gilmore also plays, and Adams comes in to partner uh, Dykes in attack. Um, what do you make of those changes, Ray? Yeah, I expected changes. Uh, I didn't expect Trippier to continue at the left back uh, for this game. Um, uh, I should see a, a, an England win, to be honest. With you. I thought there'd be maybe changes up higher in the team in the attacking areas as well, maybe freshen it up. Um, maybe Sancho, Grealish coming in. Um, but he's gone with the same guys, and uh, I'm sure he would be thinking, win this one, and maybe I'll shuffle the pack again further yeah. up the pitch in the next game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on England? Obviously, you I live don't. here. You watch. Yeah, you see the young players. You've got some of the players in the team. Yeah, so. I think I'm. I'm. You know, it's it's great to see uh, Reese starting. Obviously, you know, when you when you get your chance and and you win the Champions League, obviously he will yeah. be full of confidence yeah. and he will want to do the same thing yeah. for his country. You know, we have Mason. Obviously, yeah. he will be playing about, again. Tell me about Billy Gilmore. He's playing for Scotland. What an occasion for a young man. He, he he's, he's a talented individual. You know.